Welcome to this five-minute lesson in Advanced Shell Script Programming. The topic of this lesson is the pattern operator asterisk. This pattern operator provides the shell programmer with the capability of matching zero or more occurrences of a pattern in some pattern list. So let's look at some examples of that. To illustrate the capabilities of this pattern operator, uh, we're going to create several files in our current directory as shown here and those files have file name extensions such as .sh, .ksh, .bash, uh, .ksh88, .ksh93 and you can see that in this one there are multiple iterations of 93 and in this one there are multiple iterations of 88 and you'll see why we did that in just a moment. So to use the asterisk pattern operator with a command such as the ls command, you can tell it to list a, a group of file names uh, as you would normally. You can say star.ksh and that would list all of the files ending in .ksh. Well, if we wanted to have all of the files that were .ksh and .ksh93 and .ksh88, then we could use this pattern operator to also match those file names. And in this example, what we're saying is give us all the files that end in .ksh followed by zero or more occurrences of 93 or 88. And if you look at this file, you can see that it ends in .ksh, and that's because this pattern says zero or more occurrences. So this pattern occurred zero times, so it matches. In this next example, in this next file, we can see that the 88 occurred three times, and that's okay. That matches the pattern because it says that this pattern the 88 can occur zero or more times and so it can occur one time, two times, three times, however many times it occurs it's going to match. And in this example the 93 occurred twice and so again that matched the pattern. And KSH match because it matches zero or more times. KSH 88 matches, it, it has one occurrence of the 88 and in KSH 93 it has one occurrence of the 93. So now let's see how to use that in a for loop. So in this, in this example uh, the for loop is going to act exactly the same way as the ls command. We're just gathering a list of files that match that pattern and so we're specifying the exact same pattern in the for loop and it's going to gather up the list of files that match that pattern and assign each one to the variable f and loop through each file name that it finds and we're telling it to simply echo that to standard output. So every file that it finds it's going to echo it to standard output and so we should get the exact same list of files here that we got with the ls command and we can see that 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 is indeed the case. We got the exact same list of files. In the third and final example, example, we're doing the for loop again, but this time instead of gathering up uh, the list of files that match that pattern, we're gathering all files. We're saying give us all files in the directory and loop through each one and then test the name, uh, assign that that file name to the variable f and then test the value of the shell variable f to see if it matches that pattern. And again we're using the exact same pattern. So if it matches then it echoes it to the screen, the value of f. So uh, we see that we get the exact same list of file names again, uh, but the difference between this for loop and this for loop and the ls command is that the ls command and this for loop are testing, are, are gathering 
file names and testing uh, and simply printing the file names as it finds them. In this one, it is testing a shell variable to see if the value of the shell variable matches that pattern in a double square bracket test. And so that's the difference. That's the end of this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when new lessons are posted. Thank you for watching.